Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and if you're a regulars channel, you probably know that I am a big fan of Raylib. And Raylib just got a really cool new superpower, but first you're gonna have to understand a little bit about Raylib itself to understand why this power is so damn cool. So first off, this is Raylib. If you wanna go ahead and grab it, it is available at raylib.com. It is completely free, open source, cross-platform. This is a C-based game programming framework. It is incredibly easy to use. It is a great way to start learning the C programming language if you want to learn C by making games. It's probably the easiest way out there. The cool thing about Raylib is literally once you know the basics of programming, this is all you need to know. This is a cheat sheet for all the various different functions that are available for Raylib. Uh, it is really simple to get started with. And on top of that, there are a ton of examples. Like literally there's an example for everything that Raylib can do, which is quite cool. On top of that, Raylib itself, as I mentioned earlier on, is a C-based library, but it doesn't stop there. It's available on every platform you could possibly imagine, and that is going to uh, come into uh, more relevance when I get to the superpower in just a second, because this is going to grow potentially even more. And then on top of that, it is available for a ton of different programming languages. There's 60 plus language bindings available for Raylib. So even if you don't want to use C, uh, for example, you could use C Sharp or NIM. Pick a programming language, chances are there are language bindings for Raylib. So if you're looking for a library like this, the, the, the family of them it consists of like SDL, SFML, Raylib, Allegro, and a few others. And this one, again, probably the most beginner-friendly option out there. Uh, it's also got a number of other modules in it. A lot of them, you can use them on your own, by the way, and a number of tools to go with it as well. So if you need a math library, you can use Raymath. You can actually use Raymath without using the rest of Raylib, for example. So you've got audio, GUI, uh, ping handling, resource handling, uh, and uh, GL or graphics library handling. And that's going to be relevant in just a second here. But one of the big features, so here are the features of Raylib. So it does 2D and 3D. It does OpenGL, a number on the back end. Uh, you've got various different back end renderers available as well. But the big thing about Raylib is this, no external dependencies. You don't need to get any extra libraries to get Raylib to build. You literally just download it and build it. And a lot of times when you're working with these things, resolving these dependencies, especially in the world of C and C++, can be a giant pain in the butt. Raylib, 100% self-contained. So everything you see that it does here, it does it in a self-contained manner. Well, Raylib just became even more self-contained. Yeah, this part here, well, I guess you could technically think of OpenGL as a dependency, right? You need to have OpenGL to use Raylib. No, you needed to have OpenGL to use Raylib. Now we have this announcement. News. Uh, Raylib custom software renderer backend called RLSW has finally been merged. So this is now part of Raylib. It's not part of the official releases yet. I think you need to build from sources to get this. Uh, but for the first time in the 12 years journey, there are no dependencies. There is a no dependencies path available for Raylib rendering. No platform library uh, and no OpenGL required. That is absolutely insane. So they added this new library here. So we're going to head on over. This is the source code side of Raylib. Another very cool thing about Raylib, it's open source. It's under the Zlib license. By the way, if you like what you do, what they do here, drop them a star. Again, sadly, no release to go with this yet, so you are going to have to build it yourself uh, if you want to see it. Number of contributors here as well. But what you're going to see here, go into the source section over here, and we'll go to the external section over here, and there you now have this new one, RLSW, the Raylib software uh, something or other. So this is a software renderer. I, I think Okay, my brain's not working on why this acronym is RLSW. So maybe Raylib Software. Uh, but anyways, you see here the description. It is a custom OpenGL 1.1 style implementation on software intended to provide all the functionality available from RLGL.h library used by Raylib, uh, becoming a direct software rendering replacement for OpenGL 1.1 backend and allowing to run Raylib on GPU-less devices when required. Yeah, so this will now run if a device does not have a GPU. It does not have OpenGL 1.1 or higher support. So we're talking uh, maybe a Raspberry Pi. Most of those have OpenGL as well. But you basically your toaster, your fridge, you name it. Uh, if there is no um, GL implementation or the GL implementation sucks, well, now there is a pure software renderer inside of Raylib. And you can see what it does here. So it renders to custom internal frame buffer with multiple color modes. Uh, rendering modes include points, lines, drawing, quads. So basically, this is a software-based rasterizer. So basically, you know, when you draw a triangle on the screen, this is doing it all with code. 
On top of that, clipping, texturing is all being handled in code as well, uh, and various other um, GL features such as Gitter functions, frame buffer resizing, scissor clipping, depth testing, and so on. So yeah, that is that is it. It now has this capability. Uh, this is a single header file implementation, by the way. So all of the renderer is implemented in this RLSW.h. But this is going to make um, Raylib even more accessible. It can run on even more devices out there. It's, it's kind of a niche ability. But in some ways, this part, they're just taking it to extremes. So the Raylib is now even more portable than it was because it doesn't really need that GPU library rendering on the back end. It can now do it 100% in software. That is really a cool thing. So I gotta say Raylib, again, it's, it's one of my favorite frameworks out there to talk to you guys about because it does stuff like this. So let me know what you think. Can you think of a use case for this, for a uh, platform where this dependency, this hardware acceleration isn't there and you would need a software renderer? Let me know in the comments down below. Let me know what you think. I'll talk to you all later. Goodbye.